Hey everybody, Max Ada here, head coach of Team Juggernaut, here to talk to you about barbell trajectory and how it relates to the technique triad. So this is one of the main components of the technique triad. Uh, the trajectory of the bar is going to be defined as the path of the bar moves from the ground to overhead or from the shoulder to overhead uh, or from the ground to the shoulder. And the level of efficiency that is is going to be measured by how much deviation from a perfect lift that would be. So when we, def we define perfect lift, we're essentially talking about a, a lift where the bar moves in a very efficient path from the ground to the final fixation position uh, without the lifter moving forward or backward, uh, taking a step forward, taking a step backward to adjust. The bar remains over the area of the base of the foot, so the bar is not way out in front of them or way behind them. An example of somebody who has a good barbell trajectory is somebody who's you know, making the lift and then standing right up without having to take a single step forward or back to make uh, to, to accommodate for the balance of the bar. So their balance is perfect. The bar's in the right spot, the bar's very close to them, and the movement is very efficient. Uh, an example of somebody whose barbell trajectory is not good is the first degree of not good would be if somebody has to take one or two steps forward or takes a step or two backward to adjust for any errors in the pull. So if the bar is swung around them and they take a step or two back to stand up, or the bar is left out in front of them and take a step or two forward to adjust. They're still successful, but they're taking steps forward and back. The final example of a person whose barbell trajectory is not adequate enough is, is if the lifter is missing the bar in front or missing the bar behind. Now, if they're missing the bar in front because the bar is not high enough, that's a problem that's related to the relative height of the bar. We're talking about somebody who's lifting the bar high enough, maybe receiving it overhead, but it's, it's too far in front of them and they have to step too far forward and they can't get under the bar soon enough. Or more commonly, a lifter who's swinging the bar around their body way too much. Maybe they generate too much power at the hip and the bar flies around their head and swings behind them. And it's high enough, clearly, because it's going over their head. They're fast enough, clearly, too, because they're under it in the squat position, but the bar's trajectory is not adequate because it's going behind them too much. The final point it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fixed would be too far back and they won't be able to save it. What exercises can we use to actually address this and correct these issues? So the main thing we need to do is force the pull to be straighter. If we assume the lifter has a problem getting the bar in the right spot, we need to do things that prevent them, make the exercise harder, prevent them from pushing the bar forward or swinging the bar back. In the snatch, a great example of this is the no hook, no feet snatch. This exercise is done without a hook grip and without moving the feet. So the feet would start from the receiving position and they're going to use no hook grip. So they're just gonna use a simple grip around the bar. The first modification to this exercise, no feet, is going to be forcing them to have to extend without allowing them to move forward or backward. So somebody who normally jumps forward or jumps backward to make the lift, the condition of not allowing them to move their feet will prevent them from doing so. Clearly, trying to not move your feet and having someone still move their feet just means they're violating the rules of the lift. So no, no foot movement prevents the lifter from deviating from that balance forward and back. The no hook modification to the lift forces the lifter to pull in a more straight path. Without a hook grip, the lifter can't make as strong a contact with the hip. They can't swing the bar as much. So they're going to be forced to use the upper body and the legs to develop a straighter pull. Clean with no contact. In the clean with no contact, we're doing essentially a normal clean with the exception of the bar and body not making any contact with each other. There's still an explosion, it just is much more muted because there's no contact. So the lifter is going to pull and extend, forcing the lifter to extend in a more straight bar path, uh, much like it would with a no hook or no feet. But in this case, they don't generate as much power uh, with the hips, or they generate very little power against the bar with the hips, and they extend much more aggressively through the legs and upper body. Great use of this is in somebody who jumps forward all the time with their cleans or their, or their snatches. Developing barbell trajectory in the jerk. From a different route, we can use an exercise, jerk behind the head, which puts the bar in a better position to start. This allows the lifter to reinforce good technique and practice what the lift should actually be like when they do it well, when they execute it well. The bar starts behind the head. It's much easier to drive the bar straight. 
they can position their body and the bar in the right spot initially and get a much better drive and a much better fixation overhead. This then transfers into the jerk from in front of the head because they've learned how to be comfortable and how to make the bar go into the right spot behind their head without the added difficulty of doing the jerk from in front of their head. They'll still need to practice more specific movements later on to refine the technique of that, but it's a great example of the other side of using simpler exercises or more easy exercises to influence that part of the technique. An example of our barbell trajectory program if we look at uh, a sample week in the general phase for a lifter who is developing or spending time developing the, tra the trajectory of the barbell, we can look at this week and say the Monday workout, muscle snatch plus overhead squat, the lifter is gonna force the straighter trajectory of the bar with a muscle snatch because there's going to be no hook grip, no contact to begin with. Uh, the lifter is gonna have time, a slower movement to practice a straighter, more concise bar path and the overhead squat is just a warm-up movement for the next exercise. The no hook, no feet snatch comes next. Like we talked about earlier, the no hook, no feet snatch is an excellent exercise to force a straighter bar path. The reduction of, or the, the conditions of not moving your feet and no hook grip force the lifter to have a straighter pull. We're also gonna work on three position snatch pull. Because we are focusing on trajectory, we also have to acknowledge that the positions the lifter moves into during the lifts have a big impact on that trajectory. If the lifter is not in the right spot, they're not gonna move properly. So the three, three position snatch pull, pulling the bar off the ground, pausing off the ground about an inch at the knee, and then again at the top power position, uh, these reinforce proper positions and they can be done with a little bit more weight so the strength can be trained in those positions. And then basic exercises after that, box jumps and bodybuilding. Tuesday, the drop jerk, an excellent exercise for developing speed under the bar uh, and positioning in the jerk. As a warm-up, clean and jerks, three cleans plus one jerk. This is done to give the lifter more chance to do multiple repetitions of the clean to develop more consistency in the, the movement. The higher amount of fatigue generated from doing multiple repetitions will force the lifter to be more, be more concise and consolidate their efforts. Uh, the same thing again in the jerk on the way down. They're going to do one clean and then three jerks. For the same reason, more fatigue is going to force the lifter to have to be more accurate. These intensities are very low. 70 to 75% is a low intensity for these exercises. And so because of that, or because of that fatigue generated, this low exercise is going to be somewhat beneficial in developing the technique. Uh, and then clean high pulls as, a, as an example of a strength exercise here, along with bodybuilding afterward. Wednesday, the no feet snatch balance. So in this exercise, they're going to do a snatch bounce without moving the feet. Anytime we prevent the lifter from moving their feet, from jumping off the ground, then stomping their feet down, it's gonna force them to have to be more accurate and more uh, predictable in their movements. So eliminating the foot movement in the snatch bounce is a great way to have a lifter learn to receive the weight without having to move their feet much. That will help them from jumping forward or from jumping backward. And then more strength exercises for this day, front squat, press them split, and then some GPP exercises. Friday, we see drop snatch, an exercise that's good for developing speed under the bar and time to fixation. We still have to emphasize these other qualities. It's important to note that they belong in all programs. We can't focus solely on one quality, so there is a little bit of intermixing of different technical components as we train. Snatch plus hang snatch. Uh, these exercises are gonna force the lifter to move under the bar faster, but also, after we've practiced the no hook, no feet stuff and spent some time without moving the feet, we still need to get used to how lifters actually lift. We don't want to change a lifter's technique so completely that they start uh, eliminating the movement of their feet if that's what they used to do or that's how they lifted well. Okay. On the snatch high pull, again, just a strength exercise, something to develop and practice a technique. The intensities are lighter on the pulls generally here because they need to develop more straight bar path. Lighter weights allow them to do that. We don't want to load up really heavy pulls because it'll distort the technique and they don't need the strength. They need trajectory. They need to improve trajectory. The relative height is not as important. On Saturday, we have the muscle clean and press. Again, a very good drill for developing a straight bar path in the clean. The press, again, also forces the bar to be in a straighter path. You can't press when the bar is too far in front. Hang clean above the knee plus push jerk. These are, again, exercises as they were, the snatch, and the hang snatch, this forces the lifter to have to turn the bar over faster. It also prevents the lifter from 
having as much time to accelerate the bar so they can focus a little more on returning the bar over at the end. And then again, the three, three position clean pull. This is done to reinforce the technical positions the lifter should be in when they're doing the movement. There's also a strength exercise, back squat, and then some GPP vertical jumps at the end here. If you guys like this video, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any interest in more weightlifting technique talk or weightlifting programming, go ahead and check us out at jtsstrength.com. Thanks for watching.